the surface of an animal as it grows, as it grows, and they interact with each other and they interact with each other. And they're following these very sort of simple rules, but out of that emerges these beautiful sort of organic patterns. So what I'm doing is I'm finding mathematical equations that simulate these types of organic patterns, and I run them over and over again in the computer to create what looks very alive. Um, so none of this is, is really organic. There's no liquid, there's no oil being used. It's all a computer simulation. But, um, and it's actually quite a simple simulation when it comes down to it, but what you get is something that's very complex and very organic. If you look at this column and you look at how the shapes are drifting up very slowly and they're, they're sort of changing as they cross this membrane between these panels, if I stand in front of it now, um, it basically it slows its, its movements and then in fact even starts sort of retrogressing and going back the other way a little bit. Now it, no, it doesn't freeze, it's still working, it's still moving, but it's no longer drifting upwards and when I step out of the way, it releases itself. So it's very, very subtle, and you may not even notice it at first. And often the way people notice it is they'll stand in front of a column and they'll notice it's not moving. Why isn't that? And then they'll walk away and they'll notice all of a sudden it starts moving, or their friend will stop in front of another co column. And then you start gaining understanding of how it's working and how it's responding to you in a very subtle way. I really want people to take a deep breath when they look at it, because it's a very slow piece. I make it very slow intentionally so that you have to kind of take a deep breath, get into a meditative state, and just watch it change. And um, you know, one of the things you notice is that it's never the same twice. And the other thing you might notice is that as you get up close to it, it actually reacts to you in a very subtle way. And many people might not notice it, but it's one of these things where I, I try to reward the curious viewer. The longer you stay with it, the more you notice it. In this case, when you stand in front of a particular column, that column will stop drifting upwards. And by doing that, you've actually changed the blobs on that column forever. You've made a permanent change. And that theme is in almost all of my work, that idea that um, every interaction the piece has, has a permanent effect on it, it has a history. So the way this piece looks right now is a result of everybody who's been in this room from the moment it was turned on. What's cooking in Mill City? What's cooking in Mill City? I'm a Korean artist, so I have been having this, this Korean heritage. And when I was like trying to make a make a title of the piece, I really thought about the community and the, how is that, and what kind of words would really be depict the words. And I really like to use my Korean heritage to sort of um, imply this community, the meaning of community, as we sort of feeling. And because this one was made for the public and I really wanted to sort of celebrate the art and science and technology but that's in our university here, sort of together with as a community. When I proposed this idea, I wanted to use some of the available technologies in our school. Let's say we have a very strong nanotechnology we have a very strong um, computer science, especially robotics. And I'm working with uh, people um, in the robotics um, in a program called Atbotics. 
And so I really wanted to sort of combine those sort of, although they are different, very distant discipline from art, but I wanted to sort of make some sort of combination of those to create greater um, creative um, sort of the work. So yeah, that's how I came up with the idea of the nanotechnology and sort of use the design of the nanostructure, uh, that sort of m molecular shapes. And, um, and also wanted to use uh, the robotics technology to make this one to be interactive. When you walk by, it's going to light up and it's going to create a different patterns of the molecular shapes. Sort of th that the idea behind that is you pass by, you sort of interact with this in architecture, but the architecture is not just like staying, standing um, by itself, but it's sort of interacting with you, sort of breathe with you. And I wanted to sort of leave that trace of people, sort of, you know, when you pass by, you create one pattern, and another person comes in, and it creates a different kinds of patterns, too. So, and then you can see, like, what sort of patterns were created from the people who passed by. So that's the whole idea of, like, transformative nature of our life, community, and, you know, this whole, like, walking, passing by the building. I really want this program being successful and flourish in the future. And also I really wish that my students in the art department can be a part of this program too. Lowell is one of the largest cities in Massachusetts and is home to over 100,000 residents. Mill City celebrates diversity and honors individuality, boasting a flourishing art scene drawing both young artists and those searching to migrate to a new hip community. The music scene in Lowell is diverse. There's a lot of different kinds of music. Uh, there's cover bands, there's rock bands, there's a uh, metal scene, there's a hip hop scene. Uh, there's a variety of different kinds of music in Lowell. Art galleries and coffee shops to local eateries and pubs, downtown Lowell provides its residents with an after-hours release and its artists with several creative outlets. With these blossoming establishments, the city is embracing its virginal artistic appeal. Abram Tabor, a UMass Lowell alumni and basis for the Slurred Murrays, has strong feelings about Lowell's music scene. Unfortunately, there isn't a huge amount of venues for people to play at. Uh, one of the best venues closed a couple years ago, that was Evo's in downtown Lowell. Um, and they booked a lot of local acts, original acts. Uh, nowadays, there's a lot of bars that have cover bands that come in uh, where people will enjoy. Um, you know, they can dance around, get drunk, and sing along to songs that they already know, but for places where people create original music are few and far between. The 119 Gallery on Chelmsford Street hosts an array of art exposing new artists. Walter Wright, owner of the 119 Gallery, believes that there are several different aspects of the art scene in Lowell. There's a couple of art scenes in Lowell. There's the art scene that's kind of the promotional art scene, the scene that the city promotes and advertises, you know, art, sort of Lowell is the center for um, artist lofts, for instance, for you to move if you're interested, you know, in the arts. And that, to me, seems to be more of a marketing scheme. I remember going down, driving down Thorndike, I guess it was, or Dutton, and I saw the sign outside Mill City Properties that said, Luxury Artists Lost. And I said, wow, man, I'd love to be a luxury artist, you know? So it's not real, that scene is not really aimed at the artists, but it's kind of a, a, a marketing scheme, I think. Then there are real artists in Lowell. There's the Arts League of Lowell, for instance, with 
close to 300 members.